Okay, here's one of the downsides of atheists being super gay for science. Yeah, being super gay for science, there's a downside to it. There's a cost to that sometimes. Because the latest scientific this and that may be correct or may be misleading. And if you put too much faith in it, oh, I just read the latest science, this and that on that subject, and you put too much, you give it too much credence, you could be deceiving yourselves in ways that you're not even really aware of. Let me illustrate. I was in a debate last week with an atheist, uh, or maybe a couple weeks ago at this point. I was in a debate with an atheist a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about pornography. And I said, pornography is powerfully addicting. And he said, seemingly with a clear conscience, seemingly in good faith, pornography is not powerfully addicting. I've, I've, have you read the latest research on it? The latest research apparently says that pornography is not addicting. Well, I hate to burst your bubble there, cowboy. But pornography is extraordinarily addicting. Let me illustrate. If you've ever, any of you listening to this, has ever been to a church and attended a men's meeting, here is something that went down 100 times out of 100, no exceptions. Someone has said to the group at the men's meeting, who here struggles with pornography? Who here struggles with pornography? Did you catch the word? Struggles with. Half the men will raise their hand. Yeah, half the men will raise their hand and half of the other half are not telling the truth. Oh, I don't really struggle with it. <laughs> struggles with pornography. You do not struggle with something that is not powerfully addicting on some level. <clears throat> and then I went on to say that it's powerfully addicting because it ministers directly to the pleasure centers of the brain. And then he said again, seemingly with a clear conscience, it doesn't do that. There are no pleasure centers of the brain. There's some such thing thereof because he led, read, the, led, read the latest studies. Okay, let's say, for example, that the Bible condemned the eating of apples. You know, page three, it says, don't eat apples. This pleases the Lord. Do you honestly think that you would go to a men's meeting and say, who here is having trouble putting down the apples? <laughs> Nobody. Why? Because it's not addicting. Nobody. I, you know, I kind of like apples. <laughs> I'm not supposed to eat apples. All right. Who here would struggle with, with not eating apples? Not a single solitary man in any men's meeting across the country. Why? Because it is not addicting at all. Apples are not addicting. Therefore, it would be easy to not eat them if the Bible said. Yeah, arbitrary, apples, but whatever. If it said don't eat apples, nobody would have any problem. It says more or less in, interpreted, because there's no pornography back then, more or less interpreting don't lust. So all, every one of us is taking that to mean don't look at pornography. And, and then when you ask a group of men who here struggles with that, with that idea, half of them will raise their hand. Why? Because pornography is powerfully addicting. Powerfully addicting, and there's a reason why it's addicting. Why? Because it ministers directly to the pleasure centers of your brain. See, apparently, this is the problem with reading the latest studies and thinking you know. Reading a little bit on a subject and then thinking, oh, I've read this, now I know everything about the subject. Because you don't know what you don't know. And it's a common atheist problem. I read a little bit about this, now I know everything there is to know. Don't even get me started in the area of theology because that's where it's like off the charts. But in just in this one little area, okay, <clears throat> the reason why pornography is so powerfully addicting is because it ministers directly to the pleasure centers of your brain. See, how you, how you are wired to eat, sleep, have sex, things like that, is because the pleasure centers of your brain. You eat something, and that's why you feel the pleasure. That's what compels you to act, compels you to do things like that. And pornography gives you direct ding, 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 right to the pleasure centers of your brain while circumventing the entire process of acquiring a mate. Acquiring a sexual partner is pleasurable when you are having the sex. The process of acquiring the sexual problem, partner, well, you know, sometimes pleasurable. <laughs> it's pleasurable if you're good at it, you know. You go to someone like me, you know, you got to acquire a sexual partner. And that's a complicated process. Someone like me, not as complicated. What's up, babe? What's up, baby? All right, looking good, uh, sugar britches. You want to get with the Craigmeister? All right, honey. You know what time it is. That's right, ladies. That's right, ladies. Yeah, that's how it went down. Wow, that's some smooth skills. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's smooth, right? Yeah, I got mad skills, cuz. That's how it went down like that. For someone like you, the acquiring of a sexual partner was a relatively complicated process. And you're still struggling with it. <laughs> that's why you struggle with pornography. 
because the, it, it is ministering dile- directly to the pleasure sexual pleasure cent- sexual pleasure centers of your brain and you are not going through any complicated process of acquiring a sexual partner which for some of you is rel- relatively hard to do in the real world like I said for me not really not really I just kind of show up at the place be like what's up ladies what's up ladies Craig here what's up alright alright line them up shoot Richards line them up ladies so that's that is the downside of thinking you know a lot because you've read a little because you get everything wrong and you don't know what your errors are now pornography um Pornography goes direct. It's that's why you click on it, and it's you. You are having the pleasure of the sexual experience without any of the other complicated baggage of of actually acquiring a partner or the complicated emotional stuff, anything like that. So it's powerfully addicting in that sense. It is like the proverbial cocaine in the shoot given to the rats. Did you ever hear that story? If you've never heard that story, this will blow your mind. I heard it. I think when I was. Uh, I think I was seventh or seventh or eighth grade. Never forgot it. They did a study with rats to underscore how addicting cocaine actually is. Why is cocaine so addicting? Because it ministers directly to the pleasure centers of your brain. You think you are eating. You think you are having sex. You are experiencing the same pleasures if you are participating in those acts, and all you are doing is taking cocaine. And to illustrate the point and how addicting it is, okay, this will blow your mind if you don't know it. You give a rat heroin, and then and you, you put heroin pellets that they can tap, and they can now be hooked on heroin. They can now take heroin whenever they want, pure heroin. The rat will still live a relatively normal life. They will come back every three or four hours, take heroin, get high on the heroin, go out, still live, try to have sex with their mate, try to eat. They're dysfunctional, but they're still relatively normal, and they'll live almost a full life. They'll just come back every three hours and take more heroin. Now you put cocaine in the shoe. (laughs) What happens is stark and horrifying. And if you've ever done crack cocaine, you know it's real. (laughs) Seriously. You put cocaine in the shoe. The rat goes, the rat taps the shoe, gets the cocaine, disappears for three hours, come back, back, taps it again, gets the cocaine. Goes away for an hour, comes back again, gets the cocaine. Goes away for a half hour. Comes back again, gets the cocaine. Goes away 15 minutes, comes back again, get the cocaine. Goes back away for five minutes, comes back again, get the cocaine. Come, goes away for a minute, comes back again, co- get the cocaine. Eventually, within the course of three days, usually, the rat just sits there, tap, 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 tapping on the cocaine until they die. Honest to God, that's how scary cocaine is. Honest to God, just sitting there tapping on the cocaine until they die. You can put a female over to the, to the right of them. You can put a female to the left of them, a female to the right of them, food to the center. They won't care. They will just stay on the cocaine until they die. That's how powerfully addicting the substance of cocaine is. Pornography operates along the same principle. You are putting something directly into the pleasure center of your brain without having to do anything to get it, without having to do anything. That's why it's addicting. You want evidence that it's addicting? Go ask any men's group in the country. Who here struggles with pornography? Half of the men are going to raise their hands. Because it's really, really hard not to click. You know? So, just thought I'd mention that. Thought it was, you know, interesting. That's to underscore. Knowing a little bit about the science is never enough. And that's where most atheists live and breathe. I've read a little bit on the subject, therefore I know everything there is to know. That's not how it works. (laughs) It's honestly, it's not how it works in the real world. You know, so, there you go, that's all on the subject for now. Yeah, ruts, cocaine, pornography, whatever, it's fun. It's fun. All right, amen.